90 to 95 percent of us have worked on a virtual team at least through 2020. Some of you are continuing on. Some of you have always worked on a remote team. In this video, we're going to answer the question, how do virtual teams communicate? by unpacking seven levels at which virtual teams communicate. I'm Chad, I get to work with some really cool remote teams and I've learned some nuances about the way that teams communicate and this video is intended to help you make virtual connection and communication easier in your own context. Let's get into it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really bummed. When I came to the studio today, I had the best possible visual aid propped for this video and I forgot it on my kitchen counter, but we can still verbally bring it in. And it was, I walked down stairs and Otto, my son, you know, eats about a third or a half of a banana every day, which means that we usually by the end of the week have like five two thirds bananas rotting, laying around somewhere. Um, or often there's, a, there's at least one. And I walked down and we had bought two bunches of bananas. One was organic bananas and one was uh, genetically modified bananas. One looked really black and shriveled up and sad, the organic banana. And one looked like twice the size and perfect yellow with a little bit of green. It was awesome. And what it made me think of, and I don't know why it made me think of this, uh, maybe I have too much thinking time in my hands, but what it made me think of was when we are communicating virtually, right? One of the things we often talk about or say or complain about even is that we lose all of the organic connection that happens remotely. And I don't know about you, but a lot of my clients who identify as more introverted are kind of okay with that, right? Like small talk before a meeting isn't necessarily productive. And so much so, I, mean, and I don't know if this metaphor is a stretch, but that rotted organic banana, like organic things, sadly enough, uh, tend to last a little bit less well or age a little bit less well. Whereas a more a designed, structured banana lasts for a lot longer. And I think that when we think about in-person versus uh, virtual communication, that it's kind of like this. Like our, our like organic conversation is usually intentionless. It usually is pretty short-lived. We talk about the weather, we talk about what we did that weekend, yada, which is all fine, right? None of it's bad, but it doesn't usually create long lasting productive connections. And so the gift that I think virtual teams have is that we get to be intentional about designing and structuring really great connection before content. So in order to do that, I think you have to know what level of communication you're at because one of the strongest tips that I have for any virtual team communicating is if communication is not working, or something's going slower, or there's too many miscommunications happening at any level, any one of these seven levels, up the bandwidth, right? So literally like a text takes, I don't know, like one byte of information, probably not. Somebody can comment below with how many bytes a text cake takes, I don't know. Not a lot of bytes, right? But a video takes a couple megabytes and a Zoom call takes up a whole heap of your internet bandwidth, right? The idea is if communication isn't working at one of these levels, increase the bandwidth. So as I go through these levels, before I unpack all them, and I'm just gonna rapid fire kind of list through them, but if you are one to take notes or you wanna turn this into an exercise that you can actually improve communication in your virtual team, I would invite you to make a T chart. So like literally, whoop, Whoop. Um, or maybe an M chart, add another column. Is that called an M chart? I don't really know. M chart, Steven, what do you think? I think, think? we're, again, same with the uh, Slack Rage. It starts uh, <laughs> Slack Rage, yeah. previous video, very right. good phrase. Um, so let's make an M chart, three columns. In the first column, you're gonna have the seven levels that I'm about to unpack. In the second column, you can label purpose for those seven levels. And then in the third column, you can label agreements. So what are your team agreements around those levels? So really quick, the seven levels of virtual communication, and I'm sure that there's probably eight or nine, but these are the dominant seven that are used in virtual team communication, is text, Slack, which is a little bit more synchronous, email, which often goes a little bit deeper, but it's slower, audio messages, which I don't know if all Android people do. I, I like audio messages on the iPhone, send them back and forth. You can do them over Slack and other things, um, but that's kind of a cool asynchronous way to add the depth of voice in as well. I think it's an underutilized 
form of communication. Um, there is a problem with it, which is that all the data and information gets lost um, in that because usually audio messages disappear or they're not searchable. Up one step beyond that is phone calls. Beyond that is hopping on a video call, Zoom or something else. And then number seven is showing up outside one of your teammates' house and throwing a rock at their window and saying, hey, come out, let's chat in person, right? So here is my overarching invitation. If you want to improve communication at a, as a virtual team, create that T-chart together. So go through these seven levels, figure out what is the purpose of text, right? So text might be, you might decide that this is for like super quick things during weekdays only that need a response in 10 minutes or less, right? Slack might be for uh, when we realize we're both online, a quick back and forth that we can hash out details in 15 minutes or less instead of an hour long in-person meeting, right? The idea is you fill out the column of what is the purpose of each of those and then what are your agreements for how they're used? And so I think that's, that's a really important one to maintain like morale and health is like, do we text on Saturday mornings at 6 a.m. even if you have a really enthusiastic boss? Do you let that boss text enthusiastically at 6 a.m. or do you use Gmail's ability to schedule an email for Monday morning at 8 a.m., right? All these norms develop really organically and typically virtual teams end up settling with some sort of a unspoken purpose and agreement for all seven of these levels. But you can improve the efficiency that you communicate by having a half hour synchronous conversation around what each of these are. And when you have that, have your intern turned into a poster and print it and put it on the wall or send it out to people and let that become the culture of your communication, right? So most companies, most organizations, most schools, most universities have communication somewhere embedded as a value in that company. And so this is a really great way to take that value and operationalize it or actualize it and turn it into something really practical. So if your boss does text you at 6 a.m., but your agreement column says, we only text Mondays through Fridays during work hours for the purpose of getting a response, ideally in 10 minutes or less if possible. You don't need to step on anybody's toes. You can just point to the agreement and say, I know that this feels urgent to you, but you know what else feels urgent to me? Being healthy and taking rest on Saturday. <laughs> that feels healthy to me. So let's stick to uh, this. And uh, you know, I might not do it with so much attitude. Um, I might do it with a little bit more grace and love, but it just creates this little resource that you can point to. Okay, this is super fun. I could turn the M chart into like a W chart. We could keep going with this. Um, this is what I get to do for a living. I get to help some of the coolest leaders and educators on the planet help make connection, communication, and engagement super smooth and easy. And so if uh, you are interested and need some support in that. Check out all the resources we have below. Tons of free stuff. You can book in uh, time with me, not free stuff. Um, or you can have some really low, we create some really low cost DIY tools to help virtual and in-person teams communicate better. I'm Chad Littlefield. Lovely hanging out in cyberspace. Have an awesome day.